everyone out there, this is Matt Man with another update. Uh, today I'm going to talk about my bone marrow biopsy as well as um, my PET CT images I was able to get back and see and I'll show you some of those and then uh, staging uh, for where they think I am with uh, cancer. So overall with the um, bone marrow biopsy, so getting into the doctor's office today, um, the, first, the worst part about it really was the fact that I had to lay on my chest where um, my port still is very sore, and obviously the sutures where the heart surgery was is quite sore. So I had to lay on my chest because they pulled the bone marrow from the back of my upper hip or lower back uh, is where uh, they pulled the bone marrow from. Uh, once I was able to find a semi-comfortable position, uh, I was laying there and the doc started to poke me with a bunch of uh, um, numbing shots uh, for that. After about seven shots or so, uh, she numbed the area, she numbed the top level of my skin, kind of mid-level, and then she was able to numb the, like, the bone. She numbed multiple or two different areas uh, in my hip just because there was a potential for her to have to pull bone marrow from two different areas. So that's uh, why she, she, I had so many initial shots. Uh, Jean was there for mutual support. She uh, gets kind of queasy around needles and sadly, she, every time I, I got a shot, Jean looked back and about around the sixth shot, she was like, I'm not doing too well, and so I told her to go lay down. She actually uh, laid down in one of the uh, chemotherapy chairs, and so uh, she was able to relax. She was there in spirit, though, helping me out uh, throughout uh, the process. As far as the pressure and pain that I felt, the weirdest thing was the fact that I could hear uh, whenever they finally got the bone marrow uh, tool into my bone. Uh, as the doctor started to pull out, she had to pull um, fluid as well as tissue out of my bone marrow. Um, and you could kind of hear her grunting. I was trying to pull the bone marrow out of my bone. That was probably the weirdest part, just the physical exertion that uh, she had to um, exert in order to make it happen. That was weird. But beyond that, I felt some pressure. I, it, was, it was a weird feeling. You could feel something being pulled out of your bone for sure. And there was pain. Uh, it wasn't anything unbearable though. So um, it wasn't as scary as what I've heard or what I've been told, uh, which was nice. So the, the numbing agents worked, worked very well for me. Uh, what do I need to do now? I have two days where I'm not allowed to get that area wet so it's covered and I, I just make sure that area stays dry and clean uh, for two days. I did have to get some more blood drawn as well, which was not fun. My veins are just definitely done uh, in my arm. The, the nurse there was uh, did find a vein that worked. It was just one small vial she had to pull and I'm really happy to not be poked for four days at least before my chemotherapy starts. So there's that. That's overall the my thoughts on the uh, bone marrow biopsy. We'll get the results back in about a week and a half, and we'll see if there was any lymphoma in, in, uh, in my bone marrow. All right, as far as the PET CT, I was able to talk to the doctor about that. I'll show some of the images now. I will have a, a profile view as well as kind of a side view to show you where it is. The, the big picture is the red area is where like the aggressive cancer is. Some areas are going to show red no matter what, like my bladder and my brain and my heart. Areas where that need that glucose basically is where that uh, radioactive glucose went. But beyond that, all the other red areas are cancer. Um, as far as the findings, you can see there's multiple tumors in there, six to seven tumors uh, in my chest uh, area. The biggest issue is the fact there's that one along my spine. I'll try to highlight it now. And it, they, they sized it out to be about 10 by 10 by 12 centimeters uh, in, in size, which uh, in, ma in medical terms is it's considered a massive um, growth, which is not good. But whatever, you know, we'll, we'll go with it. My real biggest biggest concern uh, about having such a large tumor in my chest is the fact that I might need radiation therapy. I was really hoping to avoid that. Um, I was hoping to avoid the fact that we need, I might need high amounts of energy going through my vital organ area in my chest to kill this thing. But if we need to, well, obviously we'll do it. And my concern with that, by the way, is really just collateral damage. So there's a potential, obviously, that they're gonna to try to kill the cells there, but there's a potential they might harm my lungs or my heart or anything else in kind of your central chest area. So going forward, the game plan, what it's gonna be is uh, we'll do two months of chemotherapy. Uh, chemotherapy is gonna be every two weeks. Uh, and after those two months of chemotherapy or about eight sessions, I am going to uh, get another PET CT scan. We'll compare that PET CT scan to the one that you just saw. And if it goes well, Hopefully it's all gone, right? That'd be awesome after two months if we just crushed this cancer, it'd be really awesome. If not, uh, then no worries. What we're gonna do is uh, probably start radiation therapy. Uh, while surgery might, you might think would be an easy option, really not in the area that where that is though. They'd have to do a full open, open the chest surgery and get back and scrape the cancer essentially kind of off my spine and um, that would be really painful and a long recovery and uh, not something um, really the risk of uh, radiation therapy is less than the risk of doing that. 
All right, as far as staging. So for the stages, there are four stages in chemotherapy. A lot of my friends and family have already found this out, but we'll talk about it quickly. Stage one in lymphoma is where you have one lymph node uh, swollen, basically, somewhere in your body, that's it. Uh, stage two is where you have multiple lymph nodes swollen, but they are either above or all below your diaphragm. So they're kind of grouped together there. Uh, as of right now, I am at least stage two. Um, then there's stage three where there's multiple lymph nodes with cancer, with lymphoma, and they're above and below your diaphragm. Then stage four is when it leaves your lymphatic system and it's now in one of your organs, i.e. might be my heart, might be my bone marrow or somewhere else throughout uh, another person's body. But that's where they're suspecting it in me, potentially my heart or my bone marrow. So I'm either stage two or stage four. There's also, uh, they add on to the stages, I'm actually 2B or 4B. Uh, B meaning I have symptoms or A uh, would be I have no symptoms. So right now I am either stage 2B or stage 4B. So that's where it stands. Whatever stage I'm in, it really doesn't change the medicine in the chemotherapy that I'll be taking, uh, but it will change potentially the length that we think um, I will have to take the medicine. It could change the dosing as well, i.e. how aggressive uh, my oncologist is going to be with trying to uh, combat this thing. So that's kind of what it would affect. Nonetheless, I'm going to start chemotherapy on Monday at 10, and that'll be my first session. When we're discussing dynamic targeting in the Air Force and we're trying to kill something that's, uh, you know, uh, we don't know exactly where it is. We have this acronym called F2T2EA, uh, where you find it, you fix it, you track, you target, you engage, and assess. So we found out what it was based on the symptoms that I had. We were able to fix the location of the, uh, the cancer based on my PET CT scan, and we're tracking it via that as well, uh, as well as the other symptoms that I have. We're targeting it with the, with the appropriate chemotherapy uh, medicine, and then we're going to engage it on Monday with my first chemotherapy session. session. We'll assess in two months, and then we're going to repeat that process, F2T2EA, uh, until we kill this thing out of my body. It's going to be awesome. I just wanted to take a moment because my oldest daughter here, Myla, uh, she's sick from school today. She wasn't feeling the best, so we let her rest this morning and, uh, and stay home with us. But just want to let everyone else get kind of the perspective of um, my children uh, when it comes to cancer. So Myla, I just wanted to let people know what you thought uh, whenever you heard that Daddy had cancer. Well, I didn't really think it was like the cancer he has because I thought the only cancers that I knew of was like lung cancer, heart cancer, and you know, like things that a lot of people die from. But um, he, sa he said only a few people die from it and, and I was kind of happy because like if, um, if a lot of people died from it, uh, there was a big chance that daddy would die. So that was a big concern, like I said. Um, all right, anything else you want to say about Daddy's cancer or anything about you, how you've been feeling recently? Um, sick. <laughs> yeah, so she's home from school now, like I said, but now you kind of see just from her mouth the perspective of her. We'll see how it changes as, as I start to go through chemotherapy and maybe you know, lose my hair and start to get a little more fragile, but um, maybe we'll, we'll come and give another interview with Myla. How's that sound in a few weeks? <laughs> all right, we'll take her from there. All right, so uh, all right, we'll talk to you later. Bye bye. Might want to say bye. Bye. All right, that's where we stand. Again, uh, future videos I'm planning on making is uh, one I still want to talk about my port catheter and why I did that, uh, as well as uh, obviously I have some concerns and um, pressures that I'm having about chemotherapy itself. So if you have any questions about future videos you want me to make, please uh, reach out and let me know. Beyond that, you can subscribe. That way you'll get updates uh, when I have new videos that come out. So. Thanks again to all my friends. Love you guys, and I'll talk to you later. See ya.